Howdy folks, this is Tim Favreau with another edition of the CDL Podcast. Educating and entertaining you, one mile at a time. Remember to comment, chime in, and tell us your thoughts. This podcast is one man's opinion, not a lecture or a sermon. Also, please help spread the word about our show, and thank you for listening. Today's episode is about audiobooks. I have a lot of good information here in the show notes for you, so when it's safe and legal to do so, that means when you're stopped and not actually driving, please take a look at the show notes and you can get all of the details on where to get the apps and websites for the information I'm going to talk about. A lot of us, including myself, get a lot of information from audible.com. And that's okay if you have a membership and you don't mind spending money for quality content each week. However, this week's episode is going to cover where you can get content for you to enjoy for free. The next time you have some time off, if you don't already have it, I highly encourage you to go get yourself a library card in your hometown. Once you've set yourself up with your library card, you can wind up connecting online to a website called Overdrive.com. Overdrive.com is the website that connects your library card to the World Wide Web. So everything that's available at your library, you can most likely get digitally. This will save you both time and money for when you're on your resets or home for a vacation to actually go down to the library and have to look up things that you want to listen for your next trip out. You can do all of that online, and there is a great app to do that with. The app is called Libby, and I will have more information for that in the show notes. Uh, What Libby allows you to do is it connects your library card with OverDrive and lets you get free ebooks, audiobooks, magazines from your library, for your phone, for your tablet, for whatever you're using to consume your digital content. It's easy to get started with, and all you really need to do to start with is have a smartphone or a tablet, library card, and that's pretty much it. So what does that do for you? While you're driving from point A to point B, you can be out on the road for 11 hours a day if you're a tractor-trailer driver. School bus drivers, not so much. You have to listen to the kids and pay more attention to the cargo you have. But when you wind up being able to drive long distances, part of your brain will work on paying attention to the road. But you can listen to music. You can listen to... Uh, talk show radio. People have been doing this for a long time. That's nothing new. Some people, though, can wind up listening to audiobooks. And fortunately, I'm one of those people. My brother Mark is right on the other side of it. He listens to audiobooks and they want to put him to sleep. So he would prefer to listen to music while he's driving. Myself, though, I can do music or audiobooks. And my preferred choice is to do audiobooks. Now, each of us has different interests and things that will keep us occupied when we have our time off, so you can continue those interests while you're driving. Once you've found a topic through Libby with your library, you can wind up listening to these ebooks, and they will help you a lot in accomplishing either enjoyment or learning a new topic or whatever reason you have for the interest in what you're wanting to listen to. Now, over the years, I haven't found any kind of evidence that proves one way or another that reading a book is better than listening to a book. But if you're with movies, people will tell you, well, it's always better to read the book than watch the movie because there's so much more information in the book than in the movie. So I can kind of agree with that. So I look at books, regular paper books, and audio books in the same fashion. If you found a topic that you're interested in, You can read the book, and you can also listen to the audiobook. I think both formats are very complementary to each other in the fact that you will learn more if you read the book and actually listen to the audiobook. If you're one of those people that doesn't want to read books, that's fine too. That's why we have this episode today, so you can just listen to the audiobook version. 
I just want you to be aware that what I've learned over the years is that if you read the book and listen to the audiobook, it reinforces and gives you the ability to have a, a better retention of what information you're looking for if you're trying to learn something. If you're not trying to learn something and just enjoy yourself, then just listen to the audiobook and enjoy it. While we're driving, obviously we can't read. I am not encouraging that anyway whatsoever. So to me, audiobooks are much more convenient. Uh, you can wind up, again, listening to them. If they're tied in through your Bluetooth, like I had on my truck, I can pause the audiobook right while I'm driving down the road. I had the controls right on my steering wheel. I can pause the book. I can wind up continuing it as I go on. So there's no distractions from it. I can keep my eyes on the road. I don't have to look away from doing anything. So I find the audiobooks are extremely convenient for me that way. I also think that I also learn faster by listening to audiobooks. If I want to learn about a new topic at hand, um, let's say I'm working on the latest version of a computer and I want to learn some more information for the software that's on it, I can listen to two or three different audiobooks on that and get two or three different viewpoints. And between all three, take a little bit of this and a little bit of that and get a better understanding of what's going on. I also feel that doing it this way while I'm driving my 70 hours a week, it gives me the chance to save time. Since I'm already driving and doing something, I'm multitasking in a way that allows me to learn something, enjoy what I'm learning, enjoy the trip more, uh, not have to worry about getting bored or think about things that are going to stress me out. I can just work on what I'm interested in at my pace and learn as I want to go and enjoy myself. Just like some people like listening to good music to lift their spirits, to put them in a better mood, I find audiobooks are the same way. Uh, there's some book series that I've been listening to that are on their 12th, 14th book in the series. And every time a new book comes out, uh, I can't wait to hear it. And that's great because I have multiple series over the years that I listen to. So when a new book comes out, I have a new series to listen to. So it's always given me new content that I can really enjoy. Now, in those cases where if you don't have a kind of book library like that that you've been listening to and tie up to, I have two great websites and organizations you can go check out. And again, I'll have this information in the show notes. One of them is called LibreVox. Uh, LibreVox is uh, LibreVox.org. And you can go there and take a look at all of the books that have ever been put into the public domain. There's people like you and I that sign up to be LibriVox readers that will take these books that are in the public domain and create them into an audiobook. So this book is then available to the general public. It doesn't cost you anything to... Uh, download it through the app and listen to it. And if you've ever wanted to listen to any kind of classic books or anything that's in the public domain, they're free and they're available for you. It is an amazing library of books that are out there. Currently, the count, I believe, is over 50,000 books that are available to listen to. I have the LibriVox app on both my uh, Android phone and on my Apple phone. Tested both. They work beautiful. You can also listen through their website. And they also even have uh, one of their dedicated people takes all of the audiobooks and puts them through YouTube. Uh, there's no video with them. There's just the cover art of the actual book. So you got the book cover. But you can even listen through uh, YouTube if you didn't want to download one of the apps. It's amazing. It, it's something that I wish I would have found a long time ago. And the best thing about it, it's free. When I get a book, like I uh, was talking about in one of my series, I have an Audible account. And it costs me 15 bucks a month, I believe, for Audible to do this. And I get one credit a month through Audible. So each book I get through Audible is pretty much $15. It's rather expensive when you think about it. And to be able to get that kind of content, not the same content, but similar content like that through LibriVox, 
for free. It's something you just might want to look into. Which then brings me to the second website project that I found that is really good on this. It's called the Gutenberg Project. And again, the link for it is in the show notes. There's an Apple app and an Android app. In this case, I think I like the Apple app better. So Apple users, you win on this one. It just seems to be a better interface. But there's there's a ton of apps for, for Google and for everything on the Android side. So maybe there's one that somebody else will like better than I did. The Gutenberg Project has hundreds of thousands of books available to it. And these are in an ebook format, which means you have to read it. Um, that's great for those when you're not driving. This episode is focused on the audiobooks, so I first didn't give the Gutenberg Project any, any real attention. Well, that was until I found out that a lot of the books they also have are in audio format as well. So you can look it up as an actual ebook or a, a Kindle similar book and then see if there's an actual audible uh, version of it for you. In a lot of cases there is which again gives you another free resource to be able to listen to books. This is a great way to save yourself a lot of money. I know a lot of you drivers out there are on a limited budget, and any time you can wind up saving yourself a little bit of money here and there is something that's quite appealing to you. Uh, it's very appealing to me. So I just wanted to share that with you so you know that uh, the Gutenberg Project is another valuable resource for you. Now, circling back to the one I talked about first, which was the Overdrive app, um, you're using Overdrive.com with the Libby app is by far what I use the most. Uh, I consume several audiobooks uh, a week sometimes. I'm looking at four to six audiobooks a month is what the minimum I do. I don't consider myself normal by any means on that. Maybe you consume less. Maybe you consume more. I, I don't know. Really, if you're looking for current content that's coming out today uh, that you can get through your public library for free, um, get yourself your library card, sign up on Overdrive.com, and get the Libby app. I think that once you've done that and start to use it and realize just how wonderful the information that's there you can have, you will be very thankful for that. And with that, I want to say thank you for tuning in to another edition of the CDL Podcast. To learn more, connect with our community, and get free resources to build your career, please go to thecdlpodcast.com.